colony of Georgia, the British had staked their claim to the region by establishing Fort King George along the swampy banks of the Altamaha River. Originally, an Indian village had stood on the site of the fort, and in the late 1500s and 1600s, the Spanish had a mission there. The purpose of this fort was to prevent the Spanish in Florida and the French in Louisiana from moving any closer to the Carolina colonies. Fort King George didn't last long because it cost the British government too much to operate, and so most of its troops were withdrawn after only six years. Nevertheless, while it was in operation, more than 140 British soldiers died there from malaria, malnutrition, and from skirmishes with the Indians while defending the southern frontier of the American colonies. A royal charter for Georgia was granted by King George II, for whom it was named, to a group of men who shared a common humanitarian vision. They called themselves the Trustees for Establishing the Colony of Georgia in America. The leader of the Trustees was a man named James Oglethorpe. He was a person who understood the importance of establishing strong defenses against the Spanish. But more importantly, Oglethorpe and the other trustees wanted the lands of Georgia to be used by impoverished English Protestants who had been locked up in debtors' prisons for being unable to pay their bills. The trustees wanted to turn Georgia into a place where hard-working, virtuous people could prosper on family farms. And so they made grants of only small amounts of land to prevent big plantations from being developed. They outlawed slavery in Georgia, not just for humanitarian reasons, but because they believed that the moral benefits of hard work would be lost if slavery was allowed. The trustees even banned the sale of rum, mainly because this alcoholic drink had been used as an item of trade in other colonies with American Indians, and its effect on them had been very destructive. In February 1733, a ship carrying James Oglethorpe and around 120 settlers sailed up the Savannah River, the river that formed the boundary between the colony of South Carolina and the new colony of Georgia. With the help of a friendly Native American, a site for Savannah, the new capital of Georgia was purchased. The land they selected was situated on a low bluff overlooking the river about 10 miles upstream from the ocean. Oglethorpe oversaw the planning of the town which he laid out in a distinctive style made up of regularly spaced public squares surrounded by houses and public buildings. For the first 10 years, Oglethorpe acted as the colony's governor, representing the trustees back in Britain, and he ruled without the help of a colonial legislature. Only six years after Georgia was founded, war broke out with Spain over the slave trade, and Governor Oglethorpe was ordered to attack their outpost of St. Augustine in Florida. For a month, 900 British soldiers and 1,100 of their American Indian allies laid siege to the city, but they didn't have enough men to capture it. After that, as commander of all the troops in Georgia and the Carolinas, Oglethorpe continued to make improvements in his colony's defenses. Here on St. Simons Island, not far from the border of Florida, the English outpost of Fort Frederica was strengthened. Since stone was non-existent on the island, oyster shells were burned to make crude concrete called tabby to construct the fort's main buildings. During this time, Fort Frederica grew into a small town with many buildings, 500 citizens, and a large number of soldiers. Naturally, the fort was a tempting target for the Spanish forces just to the south. It was three years after the British attack on St. Augustine that the Spanish tried to strike back at Fort Frederica. But British troops ambushed the Spanish just as they were sneaking up on the outpost. During the Battle of Bloody Marsh that followed, one British and 200 Spanish soldiers were killed. After that, the Spanish threat to Britain's southern colonies ceased to be a serious problem. 
During its first 10 years as a colony, Georgia did not prosper. Few settlers had made the voyage to the Georgia shore, and about half of those that had come had done so at the trustees' expense. And the trustees' goal of turning it into a place where poor people could come to start new lives had been a failure. In fact, most Georgians felt that the trustees' rules were what was actually holding the colony back. Under the rules, Georgians couldn't develop large rice plantations like those in South Carolina or have slaves, couldn't buy rum, and had no voice in the colony's government. In other words, they wanted to see big changes made. Because the colonists were so unhappy with how things were going in Georgia, James Oglethorpe realized that his humanitarian dreams for the colony would never come true. And so, broke and feeling defeated, he returned to England and never came back again. In the years that followed his departure, the trustees' rules were changed, and in 1754, Georgia fell under the control of the king and became much more like the other southern colonies, a place where rum flowed freely and where slavery and large rice plantations flourished. True or false, Virginia was founded by men seeking religious freedom. True or false, cotton was the main export of the Virginia colony. True or false, the first proprietor of Maryland was a Catholic. True or false, indentured servants provided cheap labor in Maryland. True or false, the first tries at colonizing Roanoke Island failed. True or false, North Carolina's assembly met at Tyron Palace. True or false? South and North Carolina were once a single colony. True or false? Rice was raised on the big slave plantations of South Carolina. True or false? Georgia was the last English colony founded in America. True or false? James Oglethorpe was one of the trustees of the Georgia colony. <laughs>